Well, some seemingly spooky animals are often associated with Halloween, like black cats, owls, and even wolves. But are they really all that scary? Well, today we've come down to Tater Park to meet some of these animals, chat to their carers, and find out how really spooky they actually are. Where the viaduct looms like a bird of doom as a ship and crack. All right, so Mike, you're the head falconer here at Tater Park. Tell us about this little beauty. <laughs> this here is Audi and he's a barn owl, so it's a native species here to Ireland. Uh, you have him literally all over the country, and his name kind of tells where he's coming from. You find him mostly in the barns, and you have him um, close to your house as well, looking for his favorite prey, mice and small rats. So, Mike, these are actually a protected species, aren't they? They definitely are, yes. Okay, you so tell see us. why. I mean, look at them, they're just amazing, and they're doing such an important job here in Ireland, taking care of all the rodents. This guy alone eats about 1,500 mice per year. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about their association with Halloween as well. Now, everyone knows the owl sitting there in the dark in the corner, screeching away. Uh, it looks all out of a terrifying. Imagine yourself walking through the woods and you hear this screeching noise in the background. But look I at mean, this little fella. Imagine him coming at you. He's beautiful. Exactly Ooh. beautiful. But again, the beautiful white feathers he has, if this flies around you, it looks a little bit like a ghost, doesn't it? OK. Just this white flick flying around in the dark. Um, so, of course, people are a little bit nervous around him. But they're amazing. And I mean, it's such a small bird. Can't do any harm. Now, right beside us here, what have we got, Mike? This is a Bengal or Indian eagle owl. So his name kind of tells him where he's coming from. India, of course, you know, Nepal, Pakistan. Um, a little bit bigger than the barn owl, not native to Ireland. Uh, he also is catching a lot bigger prey than the barn owl. This guy could, of course, catch the mice and rats, but he also is able to take down rabbits. So a very, very big prey. What really catches me about this fella is his eyes. They're amazing, aren't they? Beautiful ginger eyes, definitely. And they can see amazing with it, although they don't see colour. I mean, owls mostly hunt during the night, so therefore, a seeing colour would be kind of a waste of energy and then find their prey with their ears but are not to do fluffy things on the top of his head but on the side of his head. So now, in terms of Halloween, this fella looks like a bit of a, a, li a little bit of a horned devil, doesn't he? With exactly. His little and he's a little bit grumpy as well. I mean, you can hear him screeching away here. He's just looking for his food now. All right, Mike, we are really uh, ramping up the spook factor here. Tell us about this fella. What an amazing bird. This is a Himalayan griffin vulture. She weighs about nine kilos and is definitely one of our biggest birds here. Uh, you can hear the noise coming out of her. I mean, it's kind of terrifying, uh, even for me now standing just here. OK, uh, it's, it's kind of like something out of Mordor, out of Lord of the Rings, isn't it? Exactly, and you see them in movies eating uh, carcasses. I mean, they do an amazing job. They really do. Oh, but they're not the most pretty looking, are they? No, no, tell us, well, tell us, what are you actually feeding him here, at Mike? The, at the moment, I'm feeding him just a little bit of chicken. Oh, I love and, uh, a little bit of chicken. Yeah, she doesn't think I'm feeding her enough. OK, wow. And uh, by the way, this is called Percy, so nice and gentle. Would you mind if I tried feeding a little no bit of chicken? No worries at okay. all. Well, so we'll just, okay, risk, okay, so this is... <laughs> yeah, okay. Close your hand. OK, close my hand here. Hand. Okay. Really tight, OK? Yeah, really tight. And let her just bite a little bit when you have to... Oh, tighter. OK, okay yeah. nice and tight. It's really tight here. A little bit closer. There we go. <laughs> all right, so tell us. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's all gone. It's all gone, Percy. Oh, there's a little it's bit there. There's a little bit oh, there. Oh, there's a little bit there, Percy. Oh, oh my God. That is How really, brave are you? That is really, really scary. And if feeding Percy wasn't scary enough, Mike challenges me to get even closer. So tell me again, what weight is Percy? About nine kilos. Oh, about nine kilos. So I'm going to have a nine kilo vulture fly from there to here. OK, we're going to count to three. Let it go. One, two. Two and a half. Here, Percy! Percy! And the Percy. biggest thing is now, I have no food anymore. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that was absolutely terrifying. These next animals don't look too scary, but they are surrounded with superstition. I went to find out more. All right, Craig, you're the zookeeper here in Tasha Park, and I know we have to keep our voices down a little bit now. Yeah. Tell us what we have here behind us. So we have our two, we have a breeding pair of ardwolves here, we have a female just behind us, and then our uh, male then. Uh, so these are eastern ardwolves, and uh, they're members of the hyena family. And they're quite, they're quite a popular animal to have in the park, they're quite a unique animal to have. There's only a handful throughout Europe, uh, the only ones in Ireland. Um, and they are hyenas, but we're safe, we're safe in with them. Uh, so these guys are actually insectivores, um, so they're the only ones in the hyena family that actually 
will eat insects. Um, they up to 300,000 termites a night. 300,000? Yeah. How many calories is that? <laughs> it's a lot of protein, that's what it is. So tell us about the folklore, because I know so, there's a lot of superstition around these guys, isn't there? And they're basically the black cat um, of Africa. So us Europeans like that, we see a black cat, we think of we think of Halloween, we think of a lot of superstition with these guys. That's what hyenas are coming there. Um, now throughout Africa, there's different, basically different beliefs throughout uh, Africa. So different regions, different cultures. Um, certain parts are actually seen as witches. So witches will turn themselves into hyenas. Um, and other parts, uh, the witches will actually ride the hyenas into basically these meeting spots uh, with other witches and basically discuss uh, what they've done throughout the day, all the evil deeds. Um, different ones then believe that the hyenas will actually come to the witch's house, give birth in the witch's house. Wow. And then the witches will actually milk the hyena uh, for the pups then. Okay. Um, so there's quite there's quite a bit of folklore around them. Absolutely. Um, it's quite fascinating. Like for as, as reclusive animals as they are, there's and they're not actually these guys they they wouldn't be considered fairly harmful, uh, unlike the say the, the spotted hyena, which is obviously larger, but again they tend to they tend to hide away from people. Um, but they are they are powerful animals, but it's quite fascinating to see Absol or to hear about. Absolutely fascinating. So there we have it. Uh, lots of scary birds, lots of spooky animals to see here at Tata Park right across Halloween.